Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, this is one of the trades I told you guys about last week where it was up over 500 points, $500. Well, right now it's only up $231 because it dropped back down to 160 between 138 and 160 Now it's up $100 in the last few hours. Because of what's going on in the market right now, we're expecting this to drop. That's right. We're expecting it to do the same as this one did. Now, these two rising, we're expecting them to drop and this one to drop as well. United States is going to be reporting some fake numbers this week. I promise you they will be fake. All of the numbers they've been reporting, jobless, the people, you know, their job numbers have been inflated. The same thing as the Obama administration did. Sorry, it's what they do. So, the market knows these things, and so you're going to see it reflected this week. At $650, it's when I get out of this, because it's overinflated as it is. Just wanted to show you that. Now, that's the trading. Now, the Empowerment Series, number 26B. We're going to make an exception to 26B. I have to explain something to all of you about doing motions and using ChatGPT or any of the other AI language models. If you don't know what you're looking for, you're going to be lied to. If you don't already know the answer to the question, you're going to be lied to. So how do you find the answers? Well, originally we had something like casetext.com. Casetext.com, we can go and find a law, and then we can look for other laws, and it will give it to us. But then Case Text decided it wanted to go ahead and charge people $200 a month and things like that. So Case Text no longer was viable for doing any reasonable type of research. So where can you go? Well, there are other sites that provide case law, but not in an organized fashion. And you don't want to pay for LexisNexis or Westlaw. They made it too expensive. To, the common people don't have access to law. So what do you do? Well, you use ChatGPT. What do you mean, use ChatGPT? Well, hold on. Watch this. Wake up. Wake up. I have a matter that I'm involved in. Comma. I was on an airline. And while I was sitting in the aisle, the stewardess came by with the food cart and for some reason slammed into my knee, causing excruciating pain. And I have long-term nerve damage, period. This happened in Two thousand and nineteen and according to the convention which the United States is a signatory, I only had two years in which to bring forth my claim against a foreign nation in federal court. Period. I contacted an attorney. The attorney filed the claim in state court. Comma, the reason why he filed the claim in state court is because he had an understanding that in state court for the state of New York, comma, the statute of limitations for filing such a claim was three years, and we were well within the statute of limitations for that filing, period. However, comma, the opposing counsel had the matter removed to federal court. Comma, and then opposed our original filing and requested a motion to dismiss saying that we were out of time, period. Based on the common law statute, comma, the state court has jurisdiction over the matter and that the state statute of limitation prevails in a matter that is removed to federal court as decided by so many other courts, period. Can you provide me three kite?
case citations supporting the conclusion that a matter filed in state court and removed to federal court, comma, that the state court and the laws of the state have superior jurisdiction over any federal claims on a matter removed from state court to federal court, question mark. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't already know the answer to the question, then how can you ask the question? I know it sounds stupid, but it is not stupid. When you ask a question, you must have already answered the question to yourself, which is the reason why you're asking the question, because you're trying to convince someone that you don't know the answer, including yourself. But you already came up with an answer which is why I can do this. Now, why am I doing this question right here? Before we let ChatGPT tell us the answer to the question, there was a case that was filed in New York by an attorney. How to use ChatGPT to ruin your legal career. And this attorney is making fun of the attorneys that use ChatGPT. Now, I want you to hold on, ladies and gentlemen. The attorneys that use ChatGPT, they were definitely wrong because they didn't check the case citations. You see, you notice how I, throw it into perplexity.ai, which is still ChatGPT, and then I throw it into BARD, and then I throw it into Google. See, we don't need those schools to do our research. We don't need that. Why? Because there's no law. Those schools don't have any power. They don't have any law backing them up. Just pay attention. The law is supposed to be free. Access to the law is supposed to be free, but because they provide a service, you're being charged for it. There is no website you can go to do the research because then the courts will be liable if you were to do the research and something would come up wrong. That's the catch-22 for it. So he talks about these attorneys, and they messed up because they didn't confirm their work, but they did use ChatGPT. But the only thing they could harp on was the case citations, not the argument. Just the case citations. The argument was sound because I just gave you the argument that they were trying to make. They just didn't articulate it well because they didn't understand the difference between state and federal and state law taking precedent. The Supreme Court has already said that. He filed in state court first. It was the state court's job to dismiss it, but they didn't because there was a notice of removal. Had they let it stay in state court, then he would have been able to, the other side, bring up the argument that this was federal jurisdiction and then had the matter removed to federal court because the court would have ordered it moved to a federal court or dismissed it saying that they had no jurisdiction. But because the court removed it to federal court, now the federal court had to rely on the state court jurisdiction because that was the original filing. It's a conundrum. It's a quadri that they can't get around. But the attorneys, I'm sorry, I wish they were more knowledgeable about how law works, didn't bring up the argument. They were too busy trying to save themselves because they were embarrassed because the judge told them they needed to provide proof of the case. Well, guess what I'm doing? I'm doing exactly what they should have done. I don't have the cases that they use. But watch this. ChatGPT, tell me if there's an answer to my question. They should have done what all attorneys do, change the subject matter, just like the attorney Certainly. changed the subject matter on them. Here are three case citations supporting the conclusion that a matter filed in state court and removed to federal court may still be governed by state court jurisdiction and statutes of limitations. Grable and Sons Metal Products. Thanks. I'm going to stop him from talking, y'all. Now, what I want y'all to understand, because y'all may not get it, the attorney is making fun of the other attorneys who use ChatGPT, trying to make it seem like the use of ChatGPT was the thing that was wrong. Please. Let's show you something. Because we got to go there, because I don't understand it. He makes fun of them, and I don't care. He, being a seasoned attorney, he, being an individual who's supposed to be respectable, is making fun of his brethren as if they did something extremely wrong, as, as if they were cheating. They don't talk about the software that they already have. 
he talks about how they could have just gone in and looked at LexisNexis and all of that. Do you know how much it cost them to use LexisNexis? And if you have a private practice where you are doing, uh, what are those cases, um, civil cases, tort claims, those cases don't go through court rarely fast. Those cases go through court rarely slow. And so he made fun of them, and I took offense to him making fun of them as if they didn't know what they were doing, as if you have to have a LexisNexis account in order to be able to bring forth case citations. Come on, please. What the? I'm, I'm sorry. I apologize. Let's do this. And let's do this. And come on, Perplexity. Stop playing games with me. All right. Give me a second. Let me go ahead and get Perplexity. It's the AI thing. Now, what you don't do is you don't tell Perplexity to verify the information. That's what you don't do. You just put the information in there and you hit enter. You don't need to tell it to verify. It will do the verification. It will tell you if it can't find it. The Supreme Court held that state law claims, even if they involve federal issues, may remain in state court and are not necessarily preempted by federal jurisdiction. The court emphasized the importance is respecting the state court jurisdiction and applying state statute of limitations. I didn't say this. So what perplexity does is it says, hey, homie, Check it out. And it lets you go and it lets you see where it got the information. This is why I show this to you all. I'm showing you how to deal with the courts. Had these gentlemen had known of this, the ability of doing something like this. Now, this is one of those websites, Justia. Okay? And this is where you can confirm the opinion. In a unanimous opinion, delivered by Justice Scooter, the court held that cases involving federal questions could thus be removed to federal court. The federal question jurisdiction, the court reasoned, lay over some state law claims that implicated significant federal issues. In this case, a national interest providing a federal forum for federal tax litigation warranted moving the case to federal court. However, the state law preempts. This is what they were saying. You'll go ahead and find it. Okay? Okay, did the case involving interpretation of federal tax law belong in federal court and not the state court when it, where it was filed? That's not the issue. That was the main issue of this case. But they covered the fact which law preempts. The court, pay attention, the state court claim was filed first. So the statute of limitations rests with the state court. Why? Because the person filed it in state court in order to take advantage of the statute of limitation. That's what the attorneys did. But the attorneys didn't do their research. They let ChatGPT do the research. I don't even have to read the rest of the opinion. Because there are too many decisions by the court that have already made this determination. That's why I tell you, you have to know the answer to the question before you ask it. So how do you, a person who doesn't understand law, know the answer to the question you're about to ask ChatGPT or any one of the other language models, including Claude 3? Claude 3, I'm told, is supposed to be better than ChatGPT 4. I'll, I'll be trying it out soon. Look, ladies and gentlemen, this is the year of the AI. There's going to be so many advances in AI that... You're going to be going from one system to the next. Everybody's going to be trying to outdo each other. This is our year. Every other group is going to be trying to outdo the other group, and that's going to make it beneficial for us, not beneficial for them. Shame on them. You know what I'm saying? All right. Now, here, let's go to the other case. Furthermore, in Beneficial National Bank versus Anderson, Mr. Anderson, the Supreme Court addressed the relationship between state and federal court jurisdiction when a case is moved from state court to federal court. The court emphasized that state courts retain jurisdiction over state law claims, and the federal courts may apply state statute of limitation to those claims. That's all the attorneys had to argue. That's all they had to argue. Okay? Pay attention. Here it is right here. This is where they would have taken their research to another level. This is where you take your research to another level. The question is, when, pay attention, 
uh, what is the difference between state and federal court jurisdiction if dealing, and we're dealing with statute of limitations? State court and federal court have distinct differences in their jurisdiction and functions. It establishes that individual state law with broad jurisdiction handling criminal cases, civil matter, domestic relation cases, and probate cases. They can hear cases of various issues like contract disputes, real estate disputes, tort claims, personal injury claims, tort claims, personal injury claims, tort claims, and family law matters. This was on an international flight. Does that mean a straight federal court jurisdiction? No, because the international flight was an American airline that landed in America. So state jurisdiction, that's why he brought it in New York. So the attorneys weren't dumb. They just didn't know that the law firm they were against already been through this before. And this is an argument that they made before and nobody ever challenged the argument. So, one second. When this attorney is razzing on them and telling them that they were stupid for doing it and they're making all other attorneys look stupid, no, they were stupid for not doing the research. The argument was sound. The fact that ChatGPT came up with its own cases Supporting the argument was the problem. Here is where you get your information of winning in court, people. You don't want the cases, do you understand? You want the argument. Already presume that the case already exists. You don't have to list the case. ChatGPT gives you a case, and let's do this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do you the biggest favor in the world. I want you all to follow me. Run quick seed. Yeah, this is the one that I need to be. We're going to go to ChatGPT. Well, I already have the cases. So what we're going to do, I'm going to come here and I'm going to just take one of the cases, okay? We're going to take... Watch this. No, I don't want the jurisdictional thing. I want the state law claims. So we're going to go state, competent, adjudicate claims of state law and matters that involve federal issues. Okay, so what I want is just this right here. I want this part right here. So we got copy. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a trip. Where are we going to go? We're going to just do a regular Google search. Watch what I do. Copy, paste. Okay, now what I need to do is I need to get rid of, come on now. Need to get rid of, okay, so I got to get rid of this part right here. So let's go back a little bit. And we're going to do that, that, and we're going to put our comma. And we just take the statement, ladies and gentlemen. We just take the statement. Most state courts are courts of general jurisdiction, whereas federal courts are limited jurisdiction. All federal courts are limited jurisdiction, ladies and gentlemen. State courts are general jurisdiction. They contain jurisdiction over the entire state, including over some federal laws. Okay, that's the first thing you must understand. Then, independent state grounds. State courts adjudicate claims arising under state law may adjudicate issues of federal law embedded in those cases. So all, and this is, pay attention, North Carolina, believe it's the Supreme Court, y'all. And this is all they have to do, ladies and gentlemen, this is all you have to do. You must understand, whatever your argument, whatever you think your rights are, you put your rights in there, and you just go from there. Do not sit up here and just go by the cases ChatGPT gives you. Use the argument as you just saw me put here. Now, this is only one place you can find it, and it will probably have case citations in this document. Okay, roll the state courts in our federal system. It probably, pay attention, will have case citations supporting it. They've already done the work for you because too many of these idiots, that's right, you heard what I said, too many of these idiots want to do one thing, want to get a name for themselves, want to be known for something. The rule that state courts must entertain federal claims, the court explained, 
did not apply for the purposes of enforcing the right to blah, blah, blah. But state courts must entertain federal claims. So you can bring a case in federal court, bringing a federal issue in state court, and you can also do it in federal court. I mean, in a state court. So you can bring it in state court, bringing federal issues, and in federal court, bringing federal issues. You can also bring some state issues in federal court. Shh, don't tell nobody. So what those guys had did was 100% right. But once you have a judge saying that it was bogus and a sham case citations, once you have a judge saying that, all they had to do was request leave of the court to refile. That's all they had to do. Okay, that's all they had to do. When, they, when it was originally the motion, all they had to do was said motion filed an error. That's all they had to do and redo the motion. But they didn't. They were too busy trying to avoid sanctions and disbarment because they attested to the information on the document. Now, what you guys don't know, when the courts feel like it, they want to give credit to the attorneys and say the attorneys are wrong. But when an attorney is representing you and he does something wrong, they blame it on you and they deny you the right to appeal and they deny you the right for ineffective assistance of counsel, which is exactly what the young man had in this case. But he's going to lose his right. Now, look, it depends. If they were on that plane and there was turbulence or something and that uh, stewardess was pushing that cart and it slammed into that man's knee, I don't know what the situation was. And it slammed into that man's knee, he has a right to bring forth a claim. He has every right to bring forth the claim. That's why the airlines have insurance. And he didn't sue the insurance company. And that's who he needs to sue, and he can sue them to this day. He's, I believe he's not even an American so-called citizen. But even if he was, even if he wasn't, he can still go after the insurance company. The plane doesn't get away with that. They Literally, the attorney said that it was his fault or some other passenger's fault. Literally, that's what the opposing counsel said. It was either his fault or somebody else's fault. But it wasn't the stewardess's fault. What the? I apologize, y'all. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to master ChatGPT and BARD, for instance, let's do this. We did ChatGPT. Now, BARD is a piece of junk right now. We're going to have to give Gemini a minute for Google to adjust some things because Google is trying to keep up, and now everybody's not using Google. Now, that's what you guys don't understand. Everybody's not using Google. Nobody is talking about Google. Google made a mistake. And they deserve it. Everything that Google is going through, they deserve it. But watch this. I'm going to put that in there, and I'm going to hit enter. The same thing. Now, Google doesn't want to provide case citations. Okay, now he says, absolutely, here's a breakdown of the key concept. Now, watch what I do here. And it talks about the supremacy clause and all that. That's where it stems from, so he's 100% right. It is a supremacy clause. That would be the foundation of the argument. You don't even have to mention the supremacy clause because that's exactly what I was doing when I talked about how the state court has jurisdiction. Federal courts can't take that from the state. That's why the state courts have general jurisdiction because the states are their own sovereign, separate jurisdiction from federal. So the person can bring a state court claim. And when they brought that claim and had it removed to federal court, the state court still maintains jurisdiction, the laws of the state. Why? Because someone removed it to federal court. Removal to federal court is not a law, ladies and gentlemen. That's a practice, a policy, a rule. But there is no such thing in law as moving a court case from state court to federal court. Because you trip and stump and you trample all over the state's rights, which is why they come up with all these little technicalities to put you back in state court. So watch this. Wake up. Wake up. Three case citations supporting this conclusion, comma, as I'm doing some research.
stop listening. He's going to balk. He's not going to want to give it to me. Uh-oh. He's been balking before. Stop listening. I apologize for that, ladies and gentlemen, but he provides me three cases. Firmly established, the state courts have concurrent jurisdiction over cases arising under federal law. RICO claims, in this instance, unless Congress explicitly grants exclusive jurisdiction to the state courts, as they do with uh, Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act. The Supreme Court held that state courts could not refuse to hear a claim brought under the Federal Civil Rights Act. Ladies and gentlemen, that is your 1966, I mean, 1866 Civil Rights Act. You don't want to bring a claim under 42 U.S.C. 1983. You want to bring it under the statute at large known as the, civil, the first Civil Rights Act. That's the full title, the first Civil Rights Act of 1866. It's the same as 1983 without saying 1983, and you're not using the U.S. Code because the U.S. Code is only prima facie law. You don't want to use the code. You want to use the law, or at least what they claim is the law, and that's statute at large. Okay? And because you're going after individuals for violating your rights, that's why you go after their bond first to document the fact that there is a violation, get a claim against the bond, and then you sue in federal court or in state court under your own tort claim. That takes care of a whole lot of stupidity. If you can feel me. All right. Let's look at this one. Reaffirms the state courts have the power and the duty to enforce federal law as long as Congress has not made it exclusive jurisdiction of the federal court. Just that simple. Now, just by listening to the case, I could tell you everything that went wrong. And I could tell you the judge, just like the opposing attorney, they knew each other because he's a federal attorney. They knew each other. And so when he brought the argument, the guy that was going in the federal court, who had the ability of going in the federal court, he brought the wrong argument. What do I mean by he brought the wrong argument? Because he wasn't used to the argument. These guys, that's all they do. This law firm, that's all they do is handle cases like that. They have the staff. This other attorney didn't have the staff to do the research. And so when they did the research, it was a catch-22. I'm sorry if uh, I'm looking at my camera system and there is this guy in an ATV riding by and apparently he was making sure nobody was home or somebody was home, that type of thing, so that they could figure out when they were, please, it don't work that way. Every angle of the property is covered for up to 160 feet or more. I ain't got time. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I am not speaking against anyone or putting anyone down. I'm just saying all of you, if you know the answer to your question, you know what your rights are. You know when somebody's done you wrong. So if you know they've done you wrong, put the wrong into that GPT model and say this person violated my right by doing this. Can you provide me three case citations that shows when a person does this to another person that they can be sued for damages? That's all you got to do is put your question in there. Can you provide me three case citations supporting this conclusion? Then you take those case citations, then you expand it by doing what you saw me do here. Ta-da. Now, if you can't find any case citations, then you take the statement that the system gave you because it's a language model. All it's doing is putting words together, ladies and gentlemen. You take the statement that it gave you and you go from there. I hope this is beneficial for most of you. I've seen two videos today that were designed to scare people from dealing with the court, dealing with the government, literally designed to scare people, that, that fear-mongering. And you have to ask, what is their motive? Well, the attorney that I showed you, right smack in the middle of the video, he does advertising telling people to come to his firm. 
why, why else? Isn't that why he's doing it in the first place? So he advertises his firm in the middle of the video. You don't see me advertising nothing. I don't get paid for any of this, and you're not going to pay me. I put the information out there for people because people need the information. Sorry, the little puppy is outside barking, and that's what he's there for. He's there to let me know if it's, when his barking intensifies, if it gets faster, that lets me know that someone's close to the property. But it's just a regular bark. He's just barking because he hears other dogs. And I allow it up to a point. At night, it's time to shat it up. Anyway, let's get back to the conversation, ladies and gentlemen. The idea here is when you're watching YouTube videos, ask yourself, what is their motive? Are they literally trying to educate you, trying to help you? What are they doing? Why are they doing this? You can ask the same question about my videos. You can ask, why am I doing it? What's my motive? What am I trying to do? Am I trying to get people in trouble? Am I trying to get people in the court? Am I, some people, there were actually some intelligent people, really intelligent on a stupid level, that were saying that I was some government plant. That's right, that I was working for the government, that I was a spy. That's okay, I've been called a spy all my life. They said I was a spy in my own neighborhood, said I worked for the FBI. In my own neighborhood, work for the FBI. Okay, I guess I do. I just wish they would pay me all this work I done did. They, I, I need to get paid if I'm doing all this work for them. Sorry, I'm looking at him barking and I don't see anything in the area, so he definitely must be barking at other dog sounds that I can't hear because I have this headset on. Anyway, so, ladies and gentlemen, doing a motion, simple. I've shown you how. We're going to talk about that in the next video. Adding case law and all of that and doing the foundation and all of that, we'll talk about that again, and we'll go over that. ChatGPT can put you together a pretty good outline. If you want to put together a solid motion, Okay, let me show you how to put together a detailed motion. Some of you guys want to be detailed and professional. So watch this. Wake up. I need to create. An amicus brief. On this issue. Comma, it needs to be an outline format. And it needs to contain a table of authorities, comma, table of contents, comma, background, comma, introduction, comma, statement of claim, comma, jurisdictional statement, comma, summarization, summarization. Comma. And be in an outline format. Comma. Thank you for your assistance in helping me create this sample template. Question mark. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, whether he does it or not, oh, he does it. Okay, now this is your sample brief. I will, yeah, this one should let me get a copy of the link. I'll put the link in the description. That way you guys can look at the conversation. But, or not in the description, sorry, in the title. In the title. Let me show you what he did, because you notice I haven't even seen it. Absolutely. 
Here's a sample template outline for an amicus brief supporting the proposition that state courts have jurisdiction over state law claims, even when federal issues are involved. Please note, this is a simplified template and would need to be tailored to the specifics of your case and the relevant jurisdiction. It's always best. Shut up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the reason why I'm showing you this is because it gives you an outline of a motion. All you got to do is fill in the blanks. So when it comes to table of contents, then you put this whole thing in ChatGPT and I said, I need you to create a table of contents with this information right here. Just that simple. And then from the table of contents, you go to the next section, table of authorities. I need a table of authorities involving, and then you put in what the subject matter is. And it will produce a table of authorities. And then you take those table of authorities and you confirm the table of authorities. Then after you do that, you do the same thing next with the interest of the amicus brief. And then you put in the subject matter and then you create it. Now what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to reword it because you can't let it be AI generated. So you're going to have to reword it, but you only need to reword only 20 to 60% of it. You don't have to reword everything. It just, it can be 40% AI. Okay, because the attorneys use the same template all the time with their motions for this and their motions for that and their motions to dismiss. They already have the motion already pre-printed. All they do is add the party's names. If only you guys knew that they've already been using something similar to AI all these years. It's already a pre-printed motion that was written by some other attorney. And it comes on a CD or some little website that they signed up to. This is what they do all the time. Now they want to try to dissuade the rest of you guys from doing it. And the guy who started that, uh, what is it? Do not, do not something. Uh, I forgot the website where he talked about paying somebody a million dollars if an attorney would go in before the Supreme Court and let the AI do the argument for him. He didn't know that it was at the early stage of the AI. He didn't understand how the AI worked. If he did his own private AI, you better believe it would be able to handle that. I'm getting ready to create my own private AI. As a matter of fact, I'm going to have an opportunity for people because we're going to be creating a couple of apps. And people who have coding experience, I'll be doing a video pulling those people in. They will have to sign an NDA and blah, blah, blah. But that's only because... I have to protect the interests of the people who are going to be involved, not my interests, because I won't be earning nothing for the most part of that. Probably a small percentage, if anything. I'm doing this for people. I'm not doing this for myself. So I'll let you guys know, hey, I promise you the idea I have, I can't talk about it because then somebody go take it. And I can't afford to have nobody take my ideas. Not right now. Because nobody's done it yet. Yeah, you can do bits and pieces from all over the world. And probably come up with something close to what I'm thinking, but nobody's done it yet. It's a shame. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I messed up. I turned something. No, I didn't turn it off. Whew. I thought I messed up something. All right, got to go. Y'all take care. Uh, I do hope this information was beneficial to you all. And as I said, we'll be taking this and posting it so that you guys will be able to view it and take it from here because you'll be able to continue the conversation. I need to know how to download it. I hope it's still here at the bottom. Sharon, Sharon is Karen. I met Karen. Uh, she's always getting in people's business and being on YouTube and everything. Entire Machatma, create a public Malinka. Okay, so we got the entire chat. Now, ChatGPT, when you get the, this is Gemini, this is the advanced one. This is the one where they give you two months free. And if I choose, I could go with it. But because Google puts too many restrictions, I'm going to go with one of the other software like Claude 3 that will let me do what I need to do or the private GPT where I get to feed it and train it and how to train your dragon in five seconds and make it do what I want it to do because Ray Charles told me, you know, well, Kanye West was there when he said it, okay? All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Y'all have a good day. What? I'm going to make it do what it do. If it's those of y'all who didn't get it, okay? Anyway, y'all take care. And until the next time.